Hello and welcome to this week's Tin Dog Podcast. I will be talking mostly this week about this week's episode, Utopia. Before I get to that point, of course, as always, I will talk pointlessly about things to do with the podcast. First off is the marvellous edition of the new Frapper map. Now, for those of you who don't know what a Frapper map is, basically, if you listen to my podcast, you can go to my website, which is www tin-dog.co.uk and a small map will appear on probably on the right hand side of the screen. You click on it and you put a little pin in the map saying where you're from. About four people have put their information on already which I'm awfully grateful for so hello and hello to Andy who's just put his name at the top. Now of course there's always there's the wonderful email nonsense which if you do want to email me and I've had a couple this week which I'll get to in a moment My email address is tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. Remember the hyphen, remember the .co.uk, otherwise you'll get someone else. And of course, as always, there's the MySpace group. Again, you go on MySpace. If you're on MySpace, you either type in Tin Dog in the search engine or you go to groups, type Tin Dog, all one word, and that'll take you straight to the group. At the minute, we have 30 members. And it would be nice to see some more. Everyone can leave comments, talk to other members about what they think of episodes and all sorts. But of course, as always, I normally hang around Outpost Gallifrey as well, so just say hello if you're passing. Now, I have been emailed about what I might be doing in future shows, because let's face it, this season's finishing quite soon. So, somebody's asked me to do Death Comes to Time, which is currently on my iPod. I've listened to one episode so far, I'll be listening to the other five quite shortly. Somebody else has asked me to do multi-doctor stories. So I'll be doing the two doctors, the three doctors, the five doctors, the umpteen doctors, the however many doctors, the infinity doctors, whatever is needed for that one. Probably different shows on those. If I review a story at a time, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. There'll, of course, be another story on the doctor's family. I mean, let's face it, is the master his brother? We'll look at arguments for and against that on both sides. Somebody else has asked me to review the Sarah Jane Adventures, and that series is about to start quite soon. So I think another look at the uh, thing we watched at New Year? Not a problem. Again, I'll be continuing with my Doctor overviews. There'll be two programmes on the 4th Doctor, one on the 5th, one on the 6th, one on the 7th, and one on the 8th as an overview as to where he's been, what he's been doing, and is it a lie? Again, of course, somebody probably my esteemed colleagues, will be looking at the Dalek histories, all three of them. And of course, as always, I'll be reviewing the big Finnish releases as they come out. Because, let's face it, I subscribe and I've listened to them all. Huge fan of big Finnish stuff, so I'm really looking forward to those. So don't worry, this podcast isn't going anywhere. And uh, each episode will be named whatever it is. So if you haven't seen it and you're worried about spoilers, you can always skip that episode and listen to it another time. Or you can experience it and see if you want to buy this stuff or not. It's up to you. Here is some information about a completely separate podcast done by somebody else. How is she not a screamer? There's kind of vista is, is the general consensus on this is that she's not kind of like TARDISPOD.com TARDISPOD.com They're alive! Welcome back to my review of Utopia. Ah yes, the master's back. But of course, as always, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
We're presented with a story that brings us back to Cardiff. A Cardiff at the end of, well, Torchwood. Now, is it me? Or at the end of Torchwood, did Captain Jack go, Oh, the TARDIS is there. It looked like the TARDIS was actually inside the hub. He got up and ran towards it. And in this episode, he'd obviously got up, packed his bag, put the hand inside the bag, and then ran outside and then ran towards the TARDIS, which he'd seen on a monitor. It's a small jump, but I'm sure one that would kind of be noticeable by most people. If only we'd seen him run outside or something like that. But let's face it, they did set out to make Torchwood as a separate series to Doctor Who. Which explains a lot about how Jack's very different from this series than how he was at the end of Torchwood. But then again, if you've been waiting since 1869 to see someone and they finally turn up, you're going to be pleased. A lot of people have argued over whether Jack really should have just gone up to John Pertwee's doctor and gone, would you mind giving me a lift someone and then forgetting you've seen me? Let's face it, John might have even offered, but then again he was stranded on Earth. But then again, if you'd hung around till, I don't know, well, let's face it, any time in the last century, if you'd read a continuity guide, you could have tracked the Doctor down at some point. So, Jack's now with the Doctor, hanging on the outside, again completely incapable of dying. Remember, Captain Jack is indestructible. You are not. Do not try this at home. Do not hang on the outside of a TARDIS, and definitely do not appear in an opening sequence of another show. Yeah, there was an argument over whether Jack should be hanging on the outside of the TARDIS as he travelled down the corridor, but then you would have had lots of other people going, but during the blue shift of that, he's travelling backwards in time, and during the red shift, he's travelling forwards, or is it the other way around? And that would have really interfered with the whole, is he going to the future in the distant future or not? So, let's face it, one person's pleasing them would have just upset some other fans, so let's stick with the standard title sequence. It did surprise me to see John Barrowman's name in the titles. Was his name in season one? I think I'll check sometime. And there's a problem that, you see. Did a lot of people not see season one? I know quite a few who kind of missed it and came along later. Well, that uh, bit of backstory for Captain Jack, even if you've just seen Torchwood, does get a bit confusing. It might even require a diagram. Hmm. So here we are, in the future. We haven't landed on Utopia, we've landed on Mad Max Planet, where a lot of people have got particularly bad teeth, and they're apparently what the human race could evolve into. Are you sure we couldn't evolve into something, I don't know, better? Or worse? Or different? Yeah, leave it there, who cares? Hmm. And on this planet, we've got the Professor. Now everyone knows that Ace used to call the Doctor the Professor, except when she was scared and then she called him Doctor or whatever, but it's Derek Jacobi. Now, there isn't a single person that I'm aware of who wasn't completely aware of what was going to happen. But if you weren't aware that Derek Jacobi was going to regenerate into the Master or whatever, you kind of... you wanted him to be another Time Lord. You wanted him, in many respects, to be just like the, Ma like the Doctor. Derek Jacobi is a great actor. There's no problem with that at all. If you get the chance to see um, his version of Alan Turing's life story, one of the fathers of English computing, or indeed computing, I recommend that beyond belief it's great. And I'm not just saying hang around with I, Claudius. The guy's performances are fabulous. And in The Confidential, he does say he wants to end up doing a bit of Coronation Street. And I, for one, would say within six months, the guy's going to be in Coronation Street. So, you've got the Professor trying to send people to Utopia. Now, Utopia is actually on this map somewhere, and people want to go on a spaceship and fly there. Now, is that not a little bit reminiscent of Frontos? Or even, let's face it, the Savages? All very old stories. It does ring a bell more with the Savages, but then again, well, who am I to say that it's old series referencing? Oh, did you notice the very odd child? Now, I thought it was a girl. Everyone I was watching it with thought it was a girl, except for the people who were aware of the Blue Peter competition, who were aware that, in fact, it was a boy. So I apologise for anyone who thought it was a girl, but that's why the character was sort of fixated on and then ignored. It was like, here it is, very important plot. Oh, no, sorry, we've gone in another direction. 
And that's kind of how I felt about Utopia itself. Yes, we're building a spaceship to go there, but then it's not really gone into. And are the savages devolving people? Do people suffer from something and then go a bit like mm, survival? And of course, that made me think when I, the guy was starting to turn into the master, oh, it's survival. Is that why these people, that's why he's got the drums in his head? What's going on? I don't know. Now, one of the reasons you didn't think it was the master was that he didn't have a beard. Very important for the master to have a beard, in my view. Um, obviously, some Americans don't like him with a beard. Oh, let's face it, someone on the television with a beard must be evil. Mm. Oh, hang on, he's meant to be. Oh, yeah, perhaps that's the giveaway. What made him evil or less evil this time was an absence of beard. Mwahaha. <sighs> Jacoby's played lots of parts in Doctor Who. He's actually played the master before in the animated webcast audio thing, Scream of the Chakra, which I would recommend downloading. It's still on the BBC website. Find it, watch it. It's very good. He doesn't play the master as such. He plays the remnants of the master that was left in the TARDIS after the McGann film put inside an android body. Lovely continuity. It works. The guy's got limiters set on his behaviour, um, sort of like well, law rather than data. And so he's still the master, he's still immortal, but he's not the master, but it still fits in with continuity. This story doesn't fit with continuity. Now we know that McGann fits into the whole canon because the series happened, it was there. Half human, oh, let it go, let it go. But at the end of that episode, the master is squashed inside the TARDIS. But then again, the Master's been destroyed so many times. He's been shrunk, he's been left on survival planet, he's, he's just been killed so many times. We can kind of let it go without too much conjecture. We'll all discuss it in the past, it doesn't matter. Now, it got me thinking. The Master's essence is held inside a watch. Is it the Doctor's watch? Is it just the same type of watch? Is it like a sort of Gallifrey and Tamagotchi, where it was a very fashionable thing once for everyone to get one. Was it issued to everyone in when the Time War was coming as an escape clause? You may not survive, but you can get out of it if you've got a watch. Has everyone got one of these? You've never seen it before, but then again, the series was off air for, what, 12 years, a thousand years, a million years? It seemed like a very long time. Am I digressing? Very probably. Suffice to say, I really, 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 really want one of those pocket watches for Christmas. Not a hint, merely a statement. Mm. Now, do I like the master? Yes, he did get overused in the Pertwee times. I wasn't overly fond watching the reruns of the Fifth Doctor's time with the master. But I did like him at the time, so he did fit into my whole Doctor Who worldview when I was 12. I'm not a huge fan of the Master later on. Delgado was fabulous, but what they did with him, I don't know. However, the Master on the Big Finish audios, where you find out the true backstory, where they were just childhood friends, which does fit into the whole history of the Master, rather than him being his brother, which, to be fair, I'm sure Pitt we might have mentioned in passing, or in the five doctors where he goes do i where the first doctor says do i know you i'm sure he would have spotted the fact that do i know you oh yeah you're my brother i don't know five doctors is definitely canon after all i will dedicate a whole series to what is and what isn't canon part of me likes to think that everything is canon and as a result of the time war absolutely everything happened just not necessarily in the order that you see it or experience it therefore all the books all the audios, all the variants on themes, all of the versions of history, all of the mistakes. All we're doing is experience how reality is at that point in the Doctor's life. Was that confusing? I'm sorry, I'll dedicate a whole show to that at some point. Now, was this, was this episode good? Well, part of me really, really wanted to love it. I know a lot of people have said some very good things on forums, but I didn't feel like it was the bestest episode of ever. I know it was a chess game. We're coming up to the end game. Pieces have to be put into place. But let's face it, all I wanted was Derek Jacobi to stay as the master for at least a few episodes. He would have been so good. And then we get John Sim. My favourite moment of the entire episode was when Derek Jacobi's shirt 
doesn't quite fit John Sim. And John Sim's got a high-pitched, squeaky voice, as opposed to, I am the master. I'm the master. Not quite the same thing. Let it go. There was a nice bit where Martha says, oh, I know that voice. And that's the equivalent for her of going, hang on, that's a supervillain, and he's just turned into Tony Blair. Oh, a little bit of politics. My name's Tin Dog. Good night. Not quite. A few other moments worth mentioning, of course, is uh, when the doctor's asked what he is, he doesn't say Gallifreyan. That's a race. He says Time Lord. A small issue, not worthy of note, really, is that the doctor seems to be locked out of the TARDIS using a Yale lock. That well-known security device that can stop the odd burglar, but that's about it. Now, I know on the inside of the TARDIS there is a lock button, but part of me does miss the enormous red knob that people can fondle in the nice outtake of Peter Davidson's time. Have I rambled too much about this? No, oh, let's face it, we like it. The only thing that I need to mention before I go is that if you go into the Chameleon Arch and you reach, say, Regeneration 10, you get reset back to being a human, and then you go back to being a Time Lord, do you go back to Regeneration 1? You are Time Lord from the beginning, which means the Doctor's got a Shed Lord left and the Master's got 13. In fact, they've both got 13 left. 30 plus 23 lives? That's a nice round number. Hmm, the 23 lives of the Doctor, an ideal book to be published. It'll be about a foot thick, and we'll buy a copy. So, that means the series can go on for as long as it wants. Nobody needs to get upset in five years' time when we run out of regenerations. No meaning, no need to mention the Valiard whatsoever and ever again. And then we can all live happily ever after. Please, next year, can the Blue Peter not have a competition? Because, let's face it, it always kind of jars. And let's look forward to next week, where we can all vote Saxon in the knowledge that the future is a good place where we will spend the rest of our lives. Be seeing you.